these 21 pieces represent an astonishing range of moods. I mean, exuberant, wistful, confessional, capricious. Two of the mood pieces are titled Eusebius and Floriston. When Schumann was 20, he invented two imaginary companions to comfort him during times of stress, and he called them Eusebius and Floriston. Eusebius, a melancholic, poetic dreamer, whereas Floriston was an impetuous, aggressive, frenetic individual. I don't think it's too much of a stretch to suggest that Eusebius represented Schumann's depressive self, and Floriston represented Schumann's manic self. Now, the presence of imaginary companions common amongst children. When an adult conjures up imaginary companions, it's either a sign of a very active imagination or a warning sign that psychosis is imminent. In Schumann's case, it was a sign of both. Let's listen. This is the poetic, introverted Eusebius. Floriston, by contrast, the manic Floriston. Something remarkable happens here. When Schumann was 21, he composed a piece called Papillon. Now, Papillon contains this theme. In the midst of the manic, frenetic Floriston, Schumann has a memory of a piece that he composed four years earlier. Abruptly, without any warning or preparation for the listener, Schumann inserts this memory. Just as abruptly, he exits it and launches back into the frenetic Floriston. Listen. <laughs> Abrupt transitions are part of the reason that Schumann's music was slow to be appreciated by his contemporaries. But remember, he thought the only reason to even write music is to reveal the composer's inner state of mind. And what he's revealing here in Floriston is that when he was manic, his thought process was fragmented. His associations could be loose and illogical. So memories could flit in from almost anywhere or any time. 